Okay, we are beginning part two. So uh, this time around, you do have start and finish files. Start files because we're going to be working off of some stuff from part one. And instead of working, opening this one, which you guys should do, what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up this finished one. <clears throat> so I can just work through this and then save it out at the very end because this will contain everything that we did by the end of this video. And you can probably see that uh, I have already gone and uh, did a little work on my own from the end of part one, and that was kind of your homework to do as well, since it was just a repeat of everything we did over here. Uh, let's take a look at how this back waterfall came out, pretty much just like this one over here. Uh, you might notice that, remember we had this kind of a uh, noticeable line going across there uh, that was solved by just editing the mask a little bit and let me show it to you guys there we go with everything else turned off you can see that uh, I just had to kind of put in these um, almost kind of like hair comb um, edits with the uh, the vector art and of course that was simple you just you know create another line or another point I should say and, and move it around like that and that worked out pretty good I thought okay so let's get everything back to normal and I'm pressing all the wrong buttons to do that okay let's uh, zoom back out and really quick what we'll do is we'll, we'll throw some kind of mist down here at the bottom I know we've actually, actually we've already got mist but this will be almost like little specks of, of, of water coming up yeah you'll see what we're gonna do in a sec but uh, actually again I will make things invisible and let's go over here to the spray brush tool, which is one I rarely ever find a use for, but uh, for this particular lesson I did. Okay, so uh, all I've done is I've set it so that it's going to be white, and on this side we'll do a little random scaling. Um, you can spray brush with any symbol, so you could go in the library, or you could create a symbol, it'll be in the library, go over here to edit and pick it out if you want, but uh, with the default shape we should just get a uh, circle, and let's take a look. So it's going to look something like that. Um, looks like I was wrong about adjusting the uh, paint color over there, looks like I got to do it over this way. Okay, so let's... Uh, Actually, it doesn't really matter too much where I draw this. I'm uh, just going to do it kind of in a little angle down that way. And as soon as I get one of them done, I'm going to select it. Uh, it creates a group, which is kind of my least favorite way of keeping artwork together. But uh, that's all right. We'll let it do its thing. And then I'm going to convert this to a symbol. Let's call this um, animated spray. Uh, it'll be a movie clip and now let's uh, double click inside of that and let's go ahead and put some blank keyframes out this way okay and if you want what you could do is um, click on onion skin and that means that when we go to this next frame here we should still see kind of muted out a little bit um, the, the remnants of what we had on frame one and that's just a guide for us to draw again so I can just kind of spray over this and see okay it's generally in about in the same place and then I'm gonna do that same thing one more time okay and uh, by the way I am progressing from you know frame three to four and so on uh, the hotkey for that which I should have told you guys maybe before is uh, on the keyboard it's the uh, greater than and less than symbols or the comma and the period I think most of you that I'm teaching already know that though oh, it was a little low there Okay, I believe that's all we have to do for this, and let's take onion skin off. Uh, let's go make this a little bit smaller, like that, and let's even take the, I can't remember, I took the alpha down on the version I had before. Uh, let's leave it up and see, that, see how it looks. Okay, so uh, let's make these visible again. I just cut that off of that layer, and I'm going to paste it within the mask for this front waterfall. So let's go ahead and add another layer, call this uh, spray. That mask is now visible again, so let's uh, put it back to wireframe mode. And then I'm just going to paste that symbol onto this empty layer. And with it being white on white, I think uh, we made the right choice by not taking the alpha down like that. Should be a little bit more visible like that. 
Okay. Uh, a little quick. Let's make it a bit smaller over here and just maybe move it down some. And I'll move that one down a little bit as well. Okay, that's kind of actually all I'm looking for with that. Uh, it's not a great effect, and um, perhaps if you stare at it too closely, it uh, falls apart somewhat. Um, mostly just because of the speed. We could try inserting in with F, the F5 key, just clicking on each one of these and hitting F5. Just an extra frame in there, and we'll see if that... Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. That does slow it down just enough. And again, <clears throat> I think um, this will hold truth through most of the lesson is that the kind of the, the faster we do things in a, in a background pulled out like this, the, um, the more it reveals kind of that this is fake. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not real life. Uh, so we'll, we'll try to keep things nice and slow and not break our universe. Okay, uh, the next thing I'm going to do because I think with a lot of you guys that if you are editing kind of your own, um, anything on your own that you've done, not reads, nice little painting here, uh, you might find at times that you're, you want to take an element that you've already drawn and uh, copy it and use it in another way or just animate it somehow. So um, that's not something I'd actually done when I was practicing, but I realized when I was teaching this, that might be something that y'all um, want to try to do. And let's talk about some ways that you could do that. You could uh, just uh, unlock, let's say, your, your, your background painting and then uh, make a copy of it. So I'll just paste it up on this uh, new layer over here. And I'm just going to go and lock this up again just so I don't move it at all. And uh, then you could over here to convert to symbol and we'll say this is a um, copy of painting to mask it double click inside of it now and let's mask a certain area of it we'll go down here okay so right click mask and now we've got this uh, little slice of it which maybe I could use to kind of go up and down this thing like that. Um, I've been saying you could do this a lot of the time because I think you're, you're carrying along a lot of extra baggage if you go this route because uh, essentially we're still kind of animating that entire painting. And it might not make a big deal, a big difference um, in terms of the speed. For some reason, I, I feel like it could be, um, so I'm not going to recommend that. And there's another reason I'm not going to recommend this is because if you do, like, let's say, rotate the clip like that, you start to get this weird pixelation happening, and maybe it'll be obvious if I zoom in a bit. Uh, well, there's a little, there's an obvious pixelation if I zoom in on it, but it gets it gets jagged, it gets less smooth, and there is something that you can do in the library here to smooth out. Uh, your images so I could go I could go and double click on uh, Reed's painting in the library and click on allow smoothing and sometimes I see a, a difference when I do do that I mean usually it's a good difference you can actually see right now that that smoothed out um, that little JPEG whereas if I turn it off oh, hold on. so it's off now turn it on you can definitely see that smooths out okay usually the effect only takes place if you're rotating or if you moved around the image or scaled it um, but I have noticed sometimes that it even um, with kind of the default size of it it takes away some of the crispness so I don't want to do that okay and then I'm of course left with this little guy in the state it's at uh, so I think your better bet would be to go and find um, either some quick screen capture software um, and you can see actually I've already done that. I've already just taken a little slice of this image and I've put it into the library like this. Uh, of course, too, you could always just take the original source image and, and uh, make a copy of it, crop it. You don't have to screen cap it like I did. But uh, we will use this. So I'm going to now drag that out. And let's make everything else invisible right now. 
Uh, once you have done that, you could go um, about what I was saying before with just masking the image like that. Another thing you could do, which is really not the greatest uh, tool in our arsenal here, is go to bitmap and trace bitmap. So um, you've got lots of options in here. I'm, I've am i been using Flash for like 10 years now, and some of these still kind of confuse me that we're... It's, I just find, okay, I'll try 60 now. Uh, I'll try 100 now. Uh, I think this is what I had left over from before, so let's go with 30 and uh, uh, minimum area here. I don't know. Just click on OK. You'll see what happens. That it uh, takes an image and it tries its best to make it into vector art. So, hey, look at that. Pretty, pretty miserable state there. Sometimes <laughs> the, the best thing you can, you can get from this trace bitmap image is color samples for... Um, what you had before, which you can also get with an image too. But um, so, like, really quickly, if we were gonna do something like that, we might as well, at least for this shape, we might as well just take some lines and then just like trace over top like that. And just make ourselves our own little perfect vector version. And then you can see, let's see, was that on a different layer? So I'll go over here and we'll just sample that. Uh, lock that real fast. Oh, I forgot to close off this last one. That's why it's not. Oh, maybe I did. Oh, it's this part right here. You're the one giving us problems. So now I should be able to fill that in. Then I can go sample, let's say this front part. Go grab that part there. Uh, let's, let's do another line down the middle. Actually, let's do a few lines. Let's take that color. Uh, let's turn that off for a second and grab that nice light blue. And hopefully in the end, turn that off. We've just got <laughs> something like that, which probably looks probably looks better and will animate better than our little traits bitmap there. So let's um, let's try putting this on top of this guy. Does it work? I think it does. Uh, what we might want to do, let me move it down a bit. Let's say we animate this thing going up and down like that. We probably want to color sample this front little part here and then fill that. Ooh, ooh. Wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> what are we sampling there? That's giving me a gray. Oh, I get, I see. Huh. Oh, there we go. I guess because that uh, that image was locked, I was sampling the background. Well, I don't know. The the colors I was sampling there, I thought weren't as good as what we had so uh, let's just try this so let's just um, convert this to a symbol we'll call this uh, I don't know block or something and now let's call it block animated double click inside and let's uh, make this thing kind of take a while going up and then we will bring it back down kind of quickly so I'm gonna go ahead and Keep using the old classic motion tween just for right now. Again, we are gonna find a good reason to use the newer, fancier method. But for right now, I think it's still okay to go with that. And uh, let's have it pause here for a second so there's gonna be no tweening inside of that. And then 
Put a keyframe there. Right click. Create a classic tween. Ease it on out at the bottom. So it'll kind of. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't moved it back down yet. Well, that's just going to be a copy of this frame. So right click over here to copy frames. And. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, chug, 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 and pause, comes back down. Let's watch it one more time. Good, um, but again, I think a little too fast. Uh, one thing we could do too is ease this in a bit in the beginning. I think it's a little quicker. Well, maybe we should ease it out. Would that make more sense? It's got a little bit more inertia in the beginning. Sort of hydraulic pump is pumping it forward and then it loses speed a little bit. Okay. I think it's good background candy. It's a, you know, yet another thing to make the eye wander to. Okay, so let's label this. Just block and now let's work on some smoke I'll label this smoke uh, let's make all that invisible this too in fact we might as well just um go ahead and work inside of a uh, completely new symbol so let's go right here to insert new symbol let's call this uh, wisp or smoke and for right now i think what we'll do is switch over to a wacom tablet uh, if you don't have a wacom tablet it, it's not going to be a big deal it'll help quite a bit but uh it's not uh crucial uh, let me first do this though i'm gonna make a bunch of blank keyframes and uh, by the way the hot key again for that is just uh, hitting f7 so let's uh let's go back to frame one and switch it this over to being white we don't need a stroke even though one shouldn't show up anyway let's just get rid of it and grab uh, our brush tool. Okay, uh, if you are using a Wacom tablet, this uh, use pressure should be toggled on. And I'm gonna go with uh, use tilt as well. I'm gonna set this up to the um, the, the highest uh, brush size. And here we go. It's uh, gotta kind of balance this Wacom in front of the uh, the microphone. Uh, oh, actually, one last thing. Let's go over here and turn on onion skin. And, yeah. So, again, using that onion skin. Okay, what I found was helpful was kind of starting. Oops, that's a little bit too um, jagged. Let's go fix the smoothing first. Um, if you haven't played around with the smoothing, it's uh, it's kind of obvious. It'll smooth out whatever you draw here versus if we had this set at say zero, we're going to get a lot of uh, kind of pixelation. It's hard to see it in this, or I don't want to say pixelation. I'm sorry, just a, a lot of different vector points showing up versus something smooth like ah, that. And you can see if you roll over and just kind of move it, obviously fewer points. Oops, don't want to quit. Just want to delete that. Okay. Oh, the fun of working inside of a symbol. Okay. <laughs> kind of lost my bearings there. All right. We will just go with this. So... Again, with that pressure sensitivity, when I kind of start and finish this uh, this brush movement, I kind of want to go lightly and then toward the middle, press down, and then again toward the end, try to let go. It doesn't always work, but and of course you can complete it a little bit. Yeah, it's probably silly to overdo it because. We're, we're blurring this out anyway, but I'm trying my best. Okay, so I just nudged over another frame, and again, with that onion skin on, 
you do get to see the, uh, the frames prior. So I'm just kind of following this thing on the way out. And I don't think my hand is as steady as it once was. Definitely what I found when I was doing this before, actually I did this quite a few times, is that after a while I end up straightening things out. It becomes less bendy. So if I can kind of tell myself, don't do that, and keep putting in these arcing mov movements, it should look pretty good. of dead air on this one <laughs> what's what's been happening recently actually let me go back a frame there I kind of want to make this a little chunkier well last week uh, the iPod was announced or iPad I'm sorry the iPod boy this would be an old tutorial if that were the case <laughs> Spent the past few months developing an app called Zombie Airstrike. That was kind of fun. Definitely uh, ended up being more of a project than I thought it was going to be. Although a lot of that had to do with uh, when I was kind of planning the game out, I created a, a view screen with uh, like. 12 buttons on it, or maybe actually 16, you know, 16, uh, of which I'd planned for maybe doing three weapons you could choose from, okay? And then I had, <laughs> I just had kind of like 16 empty slots of uh, buttons that I probably should have just at that point said, let me delete some of these, but then, again, I got kind of, went a little overboard and Said, well, I'll try to fill in all 16 of these buttons with different things that you can do in the game. So that probably adds on an extra month and a half's worth of work. That's where planning things out can be very crucial and sticking to that plan. Okay, see what I was saying about the. I, I, I'm kind of straightening this, this out a bit. But that's probably okay at this point because I'm going to also. Start to get rid of this line altogether. Oh. And hopefully you can see how that's happening. And again, we're going to end up blurring this whole thing out kind of dramatically, so it's not a big deal. Every one of these lines isn't too perfect. And you can see, too, I've kind of almost abandoned the, the need for using that pressure sensitivity. Okay, so that's, that's where we're headed. Uh, now what I'm going to do is... Uh, work backwards a little bit so just to confuse you let's do this let's move this whole thing out and then put in a bunch of blank keyframes before it 
We'll turn that back on, and this time we'll go back this other direction here. Went the other way and forward instead of backwards so anyway yeah that uh that ipad looks pretty cool i think it's gonna a lot of people are poo-pooing it but i think it's gonna be uh the way of things to come every uh every comic book will stay in perfect mint condition if it's published on that thing Get to turn pages. Colors will obviously be brighter than anything uh, comic books today can produce on printed paper. Uh, sheet music for uh, orchestras. Think about that. The symphony just flicking their finger instead of actually having to go and turn each one of those pages when they play. Okay. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, zoom out a little bit. I think we can work with it. Okay. Okay, so while we are still inside of this movie clip, let's go ahead and add our random code. You know, we might as well uh, nudge this out one more frame. Because uh, remember, we are going to be repeating back to frame two. And this first frame probably won't get seen anyway because uh, of the code that I'm about to paste in. It's that same code uh, that we were using before. Uh, we definitely don't need to randomize it among 200 frames. Oh, let's go and uh, throw in 40 here. And actually, I'm going to take that part of it off. And then let's copy this. So let's come out here some. Let's hit F7 so that uh, gets rid of that artwork. And then let's also hit F7 here. And I'm going to paste this back in. Uh, let's just change the variable name so we don't get any conflict there. And let's make this 30. So what we will do is go to and play. Um, what we're, let's see, we're at 45. You could also go with this dot current frame, I believe. Yeah, but let me just use 45. Too much of a big reason not to, and uh, then we will add on to that the uh, minum two. So this is gonna jump us forward uh, randomly within about this range here, and then that means that there's gonna be something of a, a delay before this uh, restarts, but a random delay, and uh, with all the smoke that we're gonna be piling on on top of each other, all these wisps, uh, it it. It should look pretty good, hopefully. Uh, of course, we do have to get back to frame uh, two at one point. So let's go to and play two. OK, uh, let me just check this one more time. All right. And let's go ahead and show everything again. Move this up some. So let's grab a wisp out of the library just to show you. There we go. And let's see, double click on this. I believe it should be going over there to the left. It gets pretty darn big. What I'm gonna do is rotate this and make it about 40% of what it is. So let's see, it'll go up, something like that. There we go. And now let's, Blur it out. And this time I'm going to set this up to high. So let's just take a look at it um, as is with this set to 17 and 7. 
Okay, it's good. You do still get to see some of the uh, kind of the, the curling that was going on there. Uh, let's try doing this with another one. Uh, this time, let's make the blurring on the Y go up. Let's see what happens if we have four of them right on top of each other. So you can see, at least timing-wise, they do something a little bit different each kind of each time. Uh, what I'm going to do is go back to just. Um, having two again and I'm gonna play a little bit more with the 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 X and the Y on these guys. Let's just see. Uh, let's copy one and then flip it horizontally which uh, I usually use a hotkey for. I'm going the slow way for you guys. Um, yeah, I remember doing that before too. I think you kind of want to avoid uh, any sort of mirror imaging. Okay, let's do this. Let's grab them all, make them a bit smaller, and at least take them so they start out of frame. So we got some action kind of going up this way, and then sometimes it goes up that way. Obviously, the, the ones that are flipped horizontally are probably the ones that are going over there. Actually, right now, we just have three of them anyway. OK, so let's grab, or let's just copy the three that we have, paste them over here, and I'm going to change the Y. Right now, there's really not a lot of <laughs> rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I'm just trying to pile all these together. So it seems like when they, they clump together, uh, it tends to be a, a little bit more of a a believable effect. Uh, let's see if I can find a good example of that happening. Like those two together, three, four, yeah. So what's that mean? The more the merrier. So I'm just going to paste another, or I'm going to copy and paste, it uh, looks like probably another six of them on here. Okay. I think it's getting there. Yeah, that, that stack right there looks pretty good. Uh, I've also got in the library the um, the Wisp that I created when I was practicing for this. So let's take a look at this guy. Oh, yeah, I remember, too, I did one thing at the end, which was I did a shape tween to kind of finish this off, which is maybe not even that necessary. Just kind of cheating it at the end. Uh, so let's let's bring this one in as well. Uh, let me just check the direction here. Okay.
Let's see if you can even spot this uh, slightly different one in here. Yeah, I can kind of tell. So again, just uh, duplicating it, throwing more of them in there. We're going to, I guess, probably see if we can break this, uh, <laughs> this the playback. What you might want to try is squeezing them together a little bit and scaling it down some. Yeah, I think that's looking a little, little bit better. Uh, one of the other things I was doing too before was uh, taking some of them and then just making them tinted uh, darker. And of course, something else you could do is just take the whole lot of them and, and tint them uh, black if you did want. Uh, let's try that for a second. We are just kind of playing around here. So let's see. Actually, you know what? Maybe a better way of doing this would be to use the blending and then subtract. So if we do that, ooh, look at that. <laughs> it's a little too intense. Uh, but you can take the uh, subtraction factor down quite a bit if you just go over here and adjust the alpha. So let's take do like about 40% and then there we go. Um, you lose a lot of the animation actually just down here at the very bottom in that case because it's that kind of black on black doesn't really work that well. Let's try it. I'm going to uh, squash them down some and then let's see. Uh, that's probably a little too much. Let's switch over to add. It's looking, it's looking okay. Um, I think I could sit here and fool with this for another half hour. <laughs> so what I might do is uh, pause the video and, and see if I can kind of come back with a nice clumping of these guys. And uh, let's try it normal again. Actually, let me just go ahead and copy a whole ton more. Yeah, definitely the more you have, the, the more they kind of collide together and, and, yeah, like that. What the heck? Let's do it one more time. I've probably got at least 20 of them in there now. I think it's I think it's working. I think it's looking okay. Um, what I might consider doing is going back in uh, to the actual artwork itself and maybe trying what I was doing with this, which was kind of making them a, a lot thinner at the end. Well, this is the this, the other wisp. Let's go to this one.
So I'll go to uh, create shape tween. Yeah, so it does something more like that. And uh, to eat my own words, see, this would have made sense to just then go with this dot current frame. Yeah, it does look better when it trails off. Okay. Man, these videos take a while to render. Um, of course, you guys all know I stop and start these things as I, as I progress through them. And uh, with this expanded size, maybe possibly with all this imagery here, it just takes a while. But anyway, so I had some free time again. And I, um, I just duplicated this block and I put it uh, on top of here. And then I put in um, that random code that we've uh, seen so many times before, uh, just so that these two aren't... Uh, always in sync and uh, but really I didn't do much other than just duplicate it and make it smaller and it uh, looks pretty good I also um, uh, played around with the smoke again and just kind of um, made some of them a little bit uh, bigger or smaller that tend to help I guess I had a few too many of them the same size also one thing I did too is um, or I, re I remembered I did too was uh, on the on one of these let's see on this smoke uh, I started with uh, kind of the same way I drew it, where I started in kind of in the middle. Well, um, I moved uh, one of the, those middle frames just to frame one. Remember, too, when we start this, we skip off that frame anyway. Uh, so it doesn't really matter what's visibly showing at frame one. Uh, that way, what I could do is uh, kind of set up the, the, the blurring effect um, and see it more how it's actually going to end up appearing uh, throughout the animation because when... Uh, you're applying those blurs to such a small shape like that. It just doesn't really come out how you're you actually going to end up seeing it, which is more like this. Uh, so that, I think, definitely helped a little bit as well. Also, too, I just put everything inside of uh, one symbol just called All Smoke at the very end. And of course, that makes it a lot more portable. You can move this thing around. And um, then, too, you could go and also uh, adjust the uh, display of it all at once and then this as well is, is also something that you could animate so you could go uh, put it inside of a movie clip and just animate uh, the blurring of it okay just going from maybe that to that that to that or again you know like this or just subtly rotating it you know and um, which rotation would, would probably look pretty good if you did it just a little bit because then it'll kind of travel from like maybe up this direction and then over this way and then people can kind of believe that uh, winds are coming there and messing with it so maybe we'll do that in a second uh, I don't want to dwell on it too much though uh, what I will do want to talk about is um, well actually let me do this before then just swapping the uh, layer depth of those two because I should have done that before uh, what I want to talk about is, I guess, uh, kind of, you know, enhancing the, uh, the, the painting without um, kind of uh, altering it too much. So, like, he, here's maybe a good example of that. Um, we've got, you know, redrew in this kind of, like, darker blue, uh, lighter blue, and so on like that. Kind of like a candy cane. And, you know, when I was playing around with this before, I, uh, I just I just kind of drew a, a big square over it and... Uh, I rotated it like so and I said that's nah, good enough you know but that's really <laughs> of course not totally respecting uh, how the art artist had it before I mean he for some reason he, he wanted to change those colors so there are some ways that you can go and uh, leave in uh, what the artist had intended so in this case let's uh, let's go ahead and set up this um, kind of rod over top of that and let's get the sizing proper Um, and also, too, we've already played with one effect, which tends to uh, leave intact a lot of what the artist had previously drawn, which is using those blend modes where you're adding or, or subtracting and then doing the alpha on them. It tends to just kind of uh, deepen the color or, or add to the, the lightness, but it doesn't kind of just draw over top of it always. So anyway, now we've got uh, this little blue bar, and let's convert it to a symbol. We're just going to call this uh, Glow Rod. And now, 
go ahead and do that glow. Let's just make it the same color. So I'll sample that and I'm going to boost it up quite a bit and set the quality to high and then I'm going to play around with the strength. It's really going to make it glow like that. But again, we've kind of overwritten what he drew before. Oh, watch this. Click on uh, Knockout and then you can see right through to what uh, he had previously. Uh, and then let's go ahead and animate this. Let's call this uh, glowing or glow rod animated. Double click, hit F6, F6, the old classic tween. And uh, this time what we'll do is we'll just take the strength down. So that'll be the only thing we really need to animate. And then pretty good, right? Okay, uh, let's name this layer before we move on. Glow rods. And since it's plural, might as well copy another one out and make use of it somewhere. Uh, you can always tint this and kind of get some free animation out of it. Let's find a good place for that. How about right there? You know, I'm going to move the pivot point of this just so that when I rotate it, I know it's going to pivot around that one spot. And I'm going to copy and paste this about a couple times. Hey, easy and it looks good. Well, since we're already playing around this little area, let's, uh, let's see if we can add the impression of some people walking around in here. Uh, originally, when I did this, you might have actually noticed at the very beginning of the lesson, I had like a little guy showing up here, uh, which I was never kind of sold on. So let me um, try to do something slightly different. Um, ooh, let's go grab uh, this gradient right down here, which we'll just promptly change. Uh, so go right to your color panel. Uh, let's make this alpha out. That's fine. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's make it be full white. And I'm going to copy and paste this for all these windows. Okay, and now that we've done that, uh, go ahead and hit F8 on it. Uh, we'll just call it um, light beams. And keep this off to the side. So just leave that, leave a copy over to the left. Actually, you know what, let's, um, let's go ahead and just make another layer for that. And right here, what we'll do is um, move the pivot point top right and send this down like so and let's see if I can remember how I did this um, actually before you go any further uh, just go ahead and duplicate this one or you know you can even just break it apart that's probably even better okay now double click inside of here okay uh, hit F6 about on frame 90 or so, then hit um, F6 again in the middle, and do your uh, uh, shape tween. I've done a lot of those this lesson already. And what I'm going to do is try to scramble this. Okay, that's part of the way there. Yeah. So you should get something similar to what's uh, happening here if you just move a few of these vector points. Oops, actually, you only want to do it on the middle one because we do, we do want to have two frames that are the same to be able to come back to. Okay, and uh, probably it's not going to matter how crazy it is. Okay, once that is done, uh, go ahead and add a bevel to it. And 
end. Let's see. Change this to 90. Uh, we're also going to, let's see, actually make, make both of them white and we'll, we'll knock it out, which should, yeah, okay, give us something sort of like this. Then let's blur it. And go over here to your blending. We're going to subtract. Oh, and you know what? Um, for the quality, let's set this up to high for uh, for the bevel. Then what I want to do is take this guy, what we had before. Um, it doesn't actually need to be a gradient. It's fine if it's not. Let's set it actually up to just a full color so it's a little bit more obvious. And just put that right back over top of those windows where you had it before. Doesn't need to go that far, that far out either. And this is going to be a mask layer. Oh, actually, you know what? Zoom in on this. And let's just take a, the line tool and then just go down like so. So we're just kind of cutting that in half. So we can select right here, right here, right here, and delete all these off. OK. Uh, well, let me try. Let's just publish it and see what happens. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do now is just play around with the alpha. So what I'm trying to do is just give the impression that uh, you're seeing people walking uh, back and forth inside of these rooms, but it's it's more that you're seeing their shadow in there versus uh, you know little tiny silhouettes and I think if we copy that and add another one in uh, it should look pretty good uh, this mask is still not perfect though it should really be going probably more like this oops what did I do wrong oh did I put that on the wrong layer okay Okay, we'll just lock that up and then, so yeah, let's take another one of these. We'll just copy and paste it. Uh, let me move it out here for a second. And uh, let's duplicate this one. So that, oh, no, you know what? I'm sorry. We don't even need to duplicate that. Let's just go and grab our old uh, random code. So we'll drop that inside of here. Let's create another layer. Paste that on in. We definitely don't have... Um, more than 100 frames. Let's just put 100 in there. And then, once again, I want to make sure it goes to and play. Oops, goes to and plays back at frame two so it doesn't ever play that random code again. Although, this actually might want to be, be one of the rare cases where that could go back to frame one and just randomly leap forward, but eh, probably not. I don't know. Why are you asking me? <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's try this as well. Maybe offset it just a little bit. Uh, I think we need to take this down even further. Yeah, I, I mean, probably the only pro, uh, issue is that you do occasionally see just a, a like a line cut through all three of these, um, um, or not all three, but all the windows, which would give the impression that the same shadow is is kicking off all of them. But um, that too could probably be solved pretty easily. Um, let me correct one thing as well, though, which is oops. Nope, 
didn't want to do that. This is kind of an imperfect mask. But um, I guess the way we could solve that would be to create two mask layers. So I'm just going to copy this frame, uh, paste that up there. Uh, let me lock both of these for a second, and then we'll just grab the second one of these uh, shadow beams or whatever we should call these. And now we'll lock both of those. Let's unlock this guy, and we will delete that, that, and that. And then back over on this one, oops, we want to do the opposite. So we'll delete that one, that one, and that one. Now let's see what's going on. Oh, you know what? This is actually, uh, this layer has not actually been put part of this mask. So we just got to drag it up underneath there. And let's see. Yeah, the, probably the only issue is that these, whoever these people are, they're, they've had a lot of coffee today. So let's just go and slow them all down. Uh, and again, just hitting F5 there. Hopefully you guys have figured that out by now. But when I'm using those hot keys, I'll... Or when you see something magical happen, it's a, a hotkey has been placed. Hey, you know what though? You, you you lose a little of the effect when they don't when they're not all hepped up. Let's see if we can get back. Okay, uh, I think I made the alpha a little bit too, or, or set the alpha too low on this one. Okay, yeah, I'm feeling it. Uh, let's do this, let's create a layer. We'll just call this, um, Shadows of people. And take all three of these layers, put them underneath there. And since we do already kind of have light beams here uh, with these the subtraction, let's go and just copy one of those symbols. Uh, let me create a new layer outside of any sort of mask. Uh, we'll just paste it out this way. And uh, let's select it. Let's take the beveling off. Let's also take the subtraction off. Uh, we can probably leave the blur on. And you can actually see from the original he's, he was kind of Reed was kind of going this way with uh, that light in there. You know what? Let's try to take it out a little bit further. There we go. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, I, I like that. Okay. Okay. The uh, the total size of this part is uh, edging toward 200 megabytes, so it looks like it's about time to shut it down and move on to a different uh, part. And in the meantime, how about uh, we all work on our own for a little while, uh, doing something that I think you guys can obviously tackle now at this part um, by yourselves. Uh, here's what I'm thinking. When I come back, I will have added some just kind of random uh, lights uh, flickering on and off uh, kind of in this area uh, in the um, 
my early example that I showed you guys, I had an elevator going up and down here. Boy, that should be something really easy you guys can tackle now. It's just a, a looping movie clip. And then again, just, you know, some things just flickering on and off. Um, and yeah, I think that's about where we will pick things back up. And then, of course, uh, in part three, we'll deal with um, kind of this whole chunk of area back here in the, the, the distant uh, background. Okay, so I'll see you back here in just a moment.